Can you believe that I grew over a hundred pounds of food last year? It was actually so simple. Let me show you how I did it. I started by planting potatoes in cardboard boxes. Reuse and recycle, as they say. Afterwards, I filled the boxes with a mixture of potting soil, compost, and worm castings. Then, I sowed the potatoes about 6 inches deep and 10 inches apart. Now all I had to do was water it once a week. Don't worry, the water won't make the boxes fall apart. If you reinforce the walls with the flaps, it can even withstand weeks of rain. One month later, this was what it looked like. Each variety of potato has its own different harvesting date, but I'm just gonna wait until four months to harvest all of them at once. I also experimented by planting the smaller spuds straight into the ground to see how this method compares to the cardboard planters. Finally, I sprinkled some nitrogen-rich fertilizer into all of the boxes at the one month mark to give the plants an extra boost. You can use a tomato fertilizer since potatoes and tomatoes are both in the nightshade family. At the four month mark, you can see that the greens have died down significantly. This is how you know it's ready for harvest. Remember to not water your potatoes for two weeks before you plan to harvest so that the spuds can be dry and easier to store. Without further ado, let's harvest the spuds. Gardening can do such wonders for your mental health. Being able to grow my own food from scratch helps me heal in more ways than one. Everything can heal and grow when it is loved well, whether we're talking about plants or people. If you're inspired to live your best life this year, consider gardening in conjunction with other forms of therapy. I recommend checking out BetterHelp, who's a sponsor of this peaceful video. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people, including me. I've met several wonderful therapists on BetterHelp ever since I used their platform in 2019 and have only had positive experiences each time. BetterHelp lets you have therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even messaging, whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. I prefer video chat. You can schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you, and if you feel like your therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch therapists at no additional cost. Join me and over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier and more abundant life. Just go to betterhelp.com and to get 10% off your first month of therapy. I'm so proud of you for starting your healing journey, and I'm rooting for you all the way. Now, back to potatoes. These are called Russet Burbanks and they were the superstar performers of the bunch. I'm definitely going to grow this variety again. The potatoes that were grown in ground were decidedly less fun to harvest and they produced less yield. This could be because I used smaller seed potatoes to start with and didn't mend the soil at all. Either way, I was still proud of this small yield and felt like I was digging for gold, so that was fun. This was the yield that the cardboard boxes produced. It was close to 30 pounds altogether. My friend and I spent that evening brushing the potatoes for storage. Don't wash them until you need them, and they'll store for about six months in a cool, dry place. Also, how crazy is this peacock? Yikes. When it came time to process the taters, we made our favorite dishes to share with our loved ones. I wish I could share these dishes with you, but I'm sure you'll make even better ones with your own homegrown potatoes. For now, have a seat at my digital kitchen and enjoy the healing sounds of a home-cooked meal.
Since the potatoes perform so well in cardboard boxes, I decided to try it out with my pumpkin seedlings as well. I used the same soil compost worm castings mixture, which I'll link in my video description. Since these boxes were quite shallow, I added a layer of straw mulch on top to keep the soil moist for longer in between watering. The seedlings grew unbelievably well in just one month, producing leaves that were three times larger than my own head. I fed the pumpkins with a second dose of nitrogen-rich fertilizer and watered it in. At around three and a half months, some of the pumpkins were already good to harvest. I found that my jack-o'-lanterns had the biggest pumpkins and produced more consistently than the other varieties. You know when the pumpkin is ready for harvest when the curly tendril at its base is tan and dry. By the time all of the plants completely died back, I produced 91 pounds of pumpkins. Pretty good for a first timer, I'd say. I used a few of them for arts and crafts, like this adorable fairy house. And yes, all of the miniature decorations will be linked in my video description as well. When the pumpkins finally died back many months later, I planted sweet corn in its place. I got these young corn plants from my local nursery, but you can easily sprout them from the kernels. I just wanted a head start. One month later, the corn babies became corn toddlers. They reached up to my waist. 
This really is an abundant crop to grow. It's very hard to go wrong with sweet corn. At around three months, the corn produced tassels filled with pollen. Rather than waiting and hoping for the pollen to fertilize the immature corn, you can ensure even corn kernels by manually fertilizing it yourself. Each one of these corn silks will turn into a kernel if pollen gets on it, so try to distribute it as evenly as you can. At the four month mark, your corn should be mature and ready to harvest if the silks are brown and crispy. I honestly should have waited even longer because some of the ears still needed more time. But goodness gracious, how could I resist? I love sweet corn and couldn't wait a day longer to eat them. I think my favorite way to eat them is to make elote, or Mexican corn on the cob with mayo, cheese, and lime. You can also sprinkle crushed hot Cheetos, my childhood favorite. Cheers! Mmm! <laughs> wow. Oh, yay! Oh my gosh. That is so good. Finally, my fourth largest crop last year was carrots. I grew a Japanese variety called Shin Kuroda from seed, and it took about 100 days to fully mature. Pulling carrots from the soil is just chef's kiss, one of the most cathartic hobbies you can have. I've honestly paid to do this in other people's farms before, not realizing how easy it is to grow carrots at home. I love this variety and will grow it again this spring. It was so sweet and delightfully crunchy. Perfect while dipped in ranch or even juiced. The one difference I'll make though is to sow the seeds two inches apart next time to give them space to grow. Here's the final harvest. They make me so happy. Even the baby carrots were absolutely delightful. I only had one massive one this time, but I'll plant them correctly next time to get a bigger harvest. Now I'm just pulling out the green garlic to include in my gift baskets. Green garlic is absolutely delicious when stir fried or pickled. I made a few of these baskets to share with friends and family, and I remember how looking at them made me feel like I won the lottery of life. If you enjoyed my garden tour, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more peaceful content. You can find the link to my gardening supplies as well as your 10% off link to BetterHelp in my video description below. In the meantime, if you want deeper content from me that gives you practical healing strategies and even greater inspiration, check out my book Forever Home. This book has helped countless people find their way back to calm after experiencing chaos in their lives, and I pray that it will do the same for you. You can buy it at thehugashop.com or in my video description. If you already have a copy, please leave your genuine review on Amazon or wherever you purchased the book. It would help me immensely in bringing this survival guide to more people who might need it. Finally, I have some awesome news to share. My devotional journal is currently undergoing a refresh and will be in stores nationwide next year. You can help me pick the new cover for this devotional by voting in the form. Please go to the link in my description to vote do not vote in the comments because I'll have no way of quantifying it and your vote matters a lot. I'm excited to see what you guys will pick. See you in my video description.